Hello, I'm uh, Teacher Peter or Peter Libro, and I'm just going to talk about this uh, video series about uh, teaching reading using sandpaper letters. Now, sandpaper letters have been going for about a hundred years. Montessori, Maria Montessori, devised the system was about was about a hundred years ago in Italy when she was teaching um, learning disabled or mentally disabled children. And uh, they found out that some of the children, or her children, were learning to read faster than the children at the local, at the local school. So the system should have taken off, but I think because it was actually tested on learning disabled children, and there's a bit of a... people don't like to talk about learning disabled things, so the system never really took off. And yet it has been around for over a hundred years and people have still been using it. Now with uh, the internet and that, videos, CDs, there are many ways to teach reading. But this is a hands-on system. It's not, you can't do it on the TV or on the computer. You must actually do it yourself. And also, whereas the video, the TV, the computer learning systems are based on uh, two learning modes which is the visual and the hearing which is good. A lot of, well most students learn by seeing but when you learn to read you learn by hearing. Now the children that get left behind in the system who can't learn to read or have problems learning to read, they learn by doing by feeling and this is where the sandpaper letters comes in because you trace the sandpaper letters so the children are feeling the sandpaper letter feeling the word as well as hearing it and seeing it and that this system uses the three modes of learning and that's why I think it's so effective so if your children are having problems and you bring in the sandpaper letters, you'll find that they will usually pick up reading a lot faster because they are learning by doing or feeling. That's their main mode of learning. In this video series, we also learn how to make shapes. Now, in the video, I think it's very important. It builds hand strength. And a lot of children, even up to 12 years old, some girls, they have very weak hands. So that doing the shapes, even though it's the most overlooked part, it just builds hand strength so they can hold the pen, so they can write. Now the next one, how to make sandpaper letters, that's the big one. Just I just go through a video lesson on how to make them. It's actually quite easy to make, there's no problems. Once you've made a couple, you fall into place. But it's just making the first one just simplifies it a bit. And then in the, in the last video, teach reading using sandpaper letters. I go through a, a lesson on how you should teach using the sandpaper letters. letters. It is actually a combination of about three or four lessons. You learn one lesson and then as you learn more, as your children know more and more words or more and more letters or more and more phonic sounds, you can bring in the words. So in this last video, the lesson that stretches over about three or four lessons. Anyway, I hope uh, you can understand them and you can see the videos and if you have any problems, well, my email's on the bottom somewhere. Good, thank you. This is uh, Peter Legro or Teacher Peter. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello, I'm uh, Teacher Peter, or Peter Lee Grove, and today I just want to give you a little lesson about shapes, drawing shapes. Now I think this is very important because of hand strength. A lot of kids, their hands are very weak, and you can bend their fingers a long way, and this goes right up to when 
at 12 years old even. Some girls with very weak hands and even at 12 years old. So this exercise actually builds up hand strength and just coordination so the, the kids, the children can get, the, get their hand into the flowing motion of writing. That's the main thing. When kids start drawing, it's just a mess. But as they get more control over their hand, then they can start writing the letters. And they get the hand strength. And also, you must make sure they hold the pen or the chalk or the pencil the way a... Sorry the way a pen is held and they hold it correctly so it's the way you when you write you hold the pen if the children hold the pen the pencil the chalk the crayons the right way so when they get a pen they can hold it the right way because a lot of them won't some of them because it's quite awkward on your little finger here on your finger and they don't want to do that and they hold it some of them. so just make sure they hold them correctly and that way, when they get to writing, they know what they're doing. That's what this exercise is, a pre-writing exercise, to get them just holding the pen and flowing it. Even though writing, my writing is up and down, but a lot of it is on a bit of an angle. You can see that. Mine, well, I can go from there to there, it doesn't matter. It's just, as long as it's in that sort of flow, some of it flows sideways, sideways, or diagonal, or vertical, but the shape, mine's per perpendicular, sometimes off-center, off-center, these are all up. But it's up to how you, know, how you want your child to write. So just remember, they, this exercise, even though it's so simple, a lot of people forget it, but it gets the hand, the arm, the mind, everything in the right order. Now just picking up things around your home, this is a piece of paper here, not a very good one. And you get something like this, I've got this, this little cup, just a little plastic cup, try and use plastic for the kids because they might break things, you don't want that. And you stick it in here and they draw around the cup as best they can. They draw around the cup like that. And then you want them to colour in that side and that side. And you say that this line is the edge, they can't go over it. And you try and get them to hold the pen, pencil, crayon, whatever, and they try and stay inside. Now a lot of kids won't. The first time, second time, mess all over, all over the place. You've got to get them going this way. Kids will do this, then they'll do that, they'll do this, this, but no, try and get them to just do the one thing one way and to touch the line and come back that gives them control but that takes more than the first page <laughs> and a lot of them when they can see that they're doing something and they color it all in they've got to have long strokes here they can see it they like doing it here try and get them to go from there to there without going over the page I suppose it would be difficult to do that, but in the end they will be able to do that. Or you can put two circles, put another circle in the bottom here. Give them a bit more to write on, let them, but let them draw the circle. They can do what they like. But always make sure they're the same way. Make a star, yeah, a cross with circles. But they should draw the circles, and or the children should draw the circles and colour them in like this. Try and get them to the edge. But they want long strokes. They only go up long strokes. Get them used to doing it. These are all long strokes up here. But that's only a plastic cup. There's many things you can use. Here's another. There's a plastic bottle I picked up. There's a hexangle. 
and it's got a top on it, you can use a top too. So anything like this, the kids like playing these things. So you get a hex angle here. Oops. Something like that. So the kids can draw around the hex angle and then they can colour them in. It's just to get them into the mode of uh, using a pen in the right way and to actually just flow, try and get them to flow. It's the muscle coordination ready for the writing thing. So all it does is just gets them used to writing. So when they can start writing, they're already doing this. So they know that the muscle action is there, so they can write. Here's another, this is just a cotton bud thing, Q-tip thing. It's shaped like a heart. So here's another thing, this is just from what I just found around the house. But get your kid to draw the pictures, to draw around the circle. Yeah. And then colour them in. So this is uh, just basically hand strength, getting this all sorted out. That's all it is. Just to make the kid do something that will get them set up for writing. But a lot of people omit it. As I said before, a lot of parents think it's too simple. But it's, uh, if they do this, you'll find in the future they will be able to write a lot better. Be no problem writing. They can just do their own name without any problem they can write. Okay. Like a signature. But they can do that very easily because they've already done this shapey thing. Okay, so we'll leave it there. So just let your kids have a go with this. Check out around the house, see what you got. I've got a, actually got some, this here's a boot for tong lollies in it. So sweets, candy, so you could use that on the thing. So there's many things you could use. The kids can do it on pieces of paper, no problem. Gives them something to do, keeps them concentrated for about 20 minutes if you can. <laughs> Okay, so I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. This is uh, Teacher Peter saying goodbye. Thank you.